and welcome. I'm Carrie Ann Flanagan Broski. I'm Joe G. Quintel. And tonight we are going to be talking about the legends of Sagdipos Manor. And uh, there's a lot of history to this place. And we're going to go over all of it with you. And we have a lot of photos to show you um, at the end. We're going to have a really nice slide presentation. I think we have about over 40, right, Joe? We have um, a big group. I, actually, I think I added like four or five, okay. so like 45 photos. I mean, it's great for me because when we do these assignments, generally only two or three photos go into each chapter for the book. And, uh, but I have to take a ton because we're looking to see if we get orbs and things. So in a place like Sagdipos Manor, it was so huge that um, I took a lot of photos. So these are brand new photos that you'll be able to see tonight. So before we get started, in case we have any new people joining us tonight, um, as I mentioned, I'm the author of uh, Historic Haunts of Long Island, Historic Crimes of Long Island, um, and the medal are my current books that are out but I have written eight books, actually nine now, because my next book, Haunted Long Island Mysteries, is due for release this September. We are really hoping that we will have live uh, in-person presentations again, because we miss seeing you guys by face. And, but that will come out in September and we've already been getting inquiries for uh, different events. Um, most of my work is nonfiction with the exception of my one novel, The Metal, uh, which has to do with Padre Pio, the saint who bore the stigmata based on a true story. And I co-authored an Italian cookbook with Mr. Sausage in Huntington because my other love is food. So we've been doing these webinars uh, since the pandemic started. Well, actually since losing my book tour this past fall. Joe and I decided to do these webinars and we have a variety of topics, um, some about the book, some about very specific topics. And I'm happy to say I finally am working with my webmaster and we've been going over things and I'm going to have the previous webinars if you've missed them up on YouTube um, sometime in, in April. So uh, with that being said, Joe, why don't you uh, say a word or two about yourself for those of you who may not know Joe. Sure. Well, um, it was an interesting day and I was born into the world. Oh, you don't want me to go back that far. Okay. <laughs> I came from the other side and here I am. No. Um, so I'm a ghost investigator and a psychic medium. And um, I started out in 1980, uh, having the fortune of moving into a haunted house. And that's how I get interested in the subject. I met Carrie Ann in 2005 during an October uh, lecture she was hosting at the Conklin Barn in Huntington. And we, she was looking for someone to help her with the field investigations and the time was right for me. And we've been doing it ever since. And it's That's, been, I don't know how many we've done now, over a hundred? Yeah, well, well over a hundred places. Well over a hundred places. We've investigated so. and, and the new book we're very excited very about. Very excited And about in case I forget to mention it at the end, um, I did start my Facebook contest. I run contests every uh, once in a while. And if you want to have some clues as to what is in the next book, you would have to go on to the Carrie Ann Flanagan Broski um, professional page where you would like it. It's not a friend's page. On Facebook. And then you could join in. And I don't know if you've taken a look, Joe, at some of the images I put up, but a those lot are, of them are of those you. Those are difficult. Those are toughies. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I make you guys work. And um, what happens is, is that you will receive, if you private message me, I'll put up a photo. It's really fun, actually. Um, I'll put up a photo of Joe or of the two of us in a selfie or something and with a little bit of a clue. So you'll have to look at the photo and you know read the clue and see if you could figure out or do a little bit of research mm -hmm. on where you think we are. Then I have um, everyone private message me the answer so they don't give it away. And um, it comes out every Monday. And then I put up a new photo on Monday and then I announce the winners. If you guess that week correctly, you earn a raffle ticket. So if I think I'm doing it for about 10 weeks. So if you play mm -hmm. every week and you get all of the answers correct, you can get up to 10 raffle tickets towards the grand prize. And then what I do is I put everything in a basket or I literally write out the raffle tickets and I pull it. I try to do it on video and the winner will receive an advanced copy once I receive it 
of Haunted Lyle Mysteries and also an Amazon gift card. So nice. usually we would have, you know, you back with us um, at Book Review, but again, we don't know what's happening with the events at this point, so we can't really do that. Uh, but you will get an advanced copy. So well, we if did, you're interested in that, then then check yeah. out the Facebook page. And we did, we did get our first our first official booking for yes yes the fall. So, yep. um, so it's, again, we don't know what's going to happen, but we're hoping that you know by the summer or even early fall that we exactly. should be back exactly. to regular events. So. so tonight we're going to tell you a little bit about Sag to Post Manor, uh, which Joe and I did for Ghosts of Long Island, uh, more stories of the paranormal. So it was the second ghost book back in 2008. So mm -hmm. we, we didn't have the, go the use of the ghost box back then, but I think Joe has some EVPs that he's going to play for us tonight. So you could see, you know, some of our earlier stories compared to some of our newer ones, how we've evolved in our um, can, investigative yeah, can process. I, can I just chime in, Carrie? And mm -hmm. I was thinking that you know, before we started, um, it's interesting how we've gone into this flow with our current investigations where I do like a video tour, we do the ghost box. And the full I take report. A lot, the yeah. Full, yeah, and and I do a lot more picture taking and recording than I did back then. So I, you know, you had a lot more photos because you're the professional photographer. You were out there right. with the big camera and everything. But it's just interesting how I look at some of the early, I yeah, have like very in, my, in, my, in my Klein folder, it says yeah. Carrie Ann investigation, <laughs> Sagatos matter, blah, 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 date. Right. It's and it says different. video. Now I have documents, video, audio, yeah. Yeah. Uh, read me files. Back then it's just, just audio. My right, email. exactly. Yeah, that's it. So, but I mean, we wanted to do this one because it is, I don't, I don't know what the COVID restrictions are right now, but usually it is open to the public. So this is one that if you call up, you can check it out and see yeah. um, if they're open. <coughs> Excuse me. So, but it does have a great history and it has an interesting uh, legend to it. And Joe, I mean, remember the day that we went there? It was like something out of an album. Yeah, I, yeah I was, um, I know, I was re recalling how it was a foggy day. It was raining. It was just beautiful. It was, and it, it's in, where is it? It's in Bayshore, is it? Yes, it's in Bayshore. Bayshore. Yes. Thank yeah, it's you. right off of Montauk Highway. So mm -hmm. it's not far from where I live now. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just the South Shore. It's so different from the North Shore. Um, but the South Shore is replete with a lot of really historic places, and this is one of them. Yes. And um, I just remember it was the even the photographing. I show I have a couple pictures of you out there in front of the house, you know, with the trees and the the, the fence in the background, everything. And it's just a perfect. It, it just reminds me of like you're in some English, some place in England, or you know, in the countryside. And there's this huge right. manor house. Yeah. So I really liked it, and it. it Great. Look forward to telling everybody about yeah. it. Yeah, and like I said, we have lots of photos. We're going to save mm -hmm. that towards the end. And we'll EVPs. Go I've got and, EV, and the EVPs. I, I have found some more that you don't know about. Okay, I was, I was I'm, like the surprise carry. Yes, okay. exactly. Well, the land on which the Sag Coast Manor um, sits was once comprised of twelve hundred acres, if you can imagine that, and wow, it stretched incredible. from the Great South Bay all the way to its location today in Bayshore. Um, actually, no, all the way to Brentwood. It went um, from the Great South Bay all the way to Brentwood. And the original inhabitants of the land were a group, and I'm saying a group, they were not a tribe of Indians called the Secatog Indians. Um, they were actually a branch of the Algonquins, which occupied much of Long Island. Yeah, and where did the name Sagatos come from? Uh, it's an interesting, there, it, there's two stories. Uh, one states that the shape of the 1200 acres resembled the head of a snake, which in Indian terms is referred to as Sagatos. Um, it's also been said that the term Sagatos means the snakes were hissing. Yeah. So uh, was that you that did that bang or was that a spirit? I have no idea. I have no okay. Idea. Um, well, it, maybe it's, maybe the prince, the Indian princess is here. <laughs> um, well, it is doubtful that there was an abundance of hissing snakes, snakes but instead there was a winding creek that meandered uh, around the land there and greatly resembled a snake slithering along. You know how creeks kind of just meander there. Mm -hmm. So the creek uh, gave off a hissing sound as it babbled over the rocks. And since the Indians used a lot of symbolism to describe things, it's possible that 
uh, this is what they're referring to and that this is where the name came from. Now, because of all the development over the years, uh, the creek has dried out and hasn't existed for many years, but uh, the name has lived on. I always think it's interesting how names of places come to be. Yes, and definitely. Especially one of my ones favorite. With the, with the Indians. Now, yes. what's, what's a shame, though, it's very unfortunate that the Indians really didn't know or understand much about land ownership mm -hmm. or buying or, or selling of it. They really couldn't comprehend it. So when the white man came along, they simply went with their wishes. And in the Sacred Coast Manor's archives, there exists a deed written by uh, the white men. And in it, um, written in a language that the Indians could not possibly understand, um, it was completely foreign to them. So they basically just sealed the deal with like a thumbprint of blood. And um, that was sort of their mark, so to speak. Um, and some trades were made, they had the wampum, they would trade that, but they really didn't know what they were giving away. And it was really a shame because this was a very heavily uh, Indian you know, area. And once they put that mark, that thumbprint of blood, they sold the land and it didn't belong to them after that. And it was taken away before they even knew it was gone. Yeah, and you know, um, when we arrived at the manor, the rain was coming down in buckets. Yeah, it really was. It was, and it, it but it, it had just that relaxing, you know, that rainy day kind of, it's very, it's white noise and it's, mm -hmm. it's a very relaxing. It's like background ambient noise that you would use like in a meditation. You know, they have these things you can, these records and these recordings you can buy that kind of, it's just like the sound of a babbling brook or something. So it was kind of that day. And it was, uh, it was treacherous to trying to get through the flooded roadways to get there. Um, now, when we got there, we were warmly greeted by Nancy and Larry Don Donahue. Uh, and they are perhaps the manor's biggest and most dedicated fans. Got to remember how, how excited they were about the place. Right. And um, Nancy had been the president of the Sackville's Manor Historical Society for 20 years. And her husband, Larry, was president three years before that. Now both remained active volunteers in the preservation of this historic home. And you know, through the mud and the puddles, we followed them around to the back of this massive house, dragging our briefcases and cameras. <laughs> yes, we, we did. We most definitely did. I had my red coat as you had the picture. Which I, which they'll see tonight. Yeah. Now, uh, what's interesting about Sagged Coast Manor is that it was actually built in three separate time periods. So the first one was in 1697. That's amazing. Then again in 1772, and then in 1902. And it's one of the features that makes the house very unique. So when we did the interview with Nancy and Larry, we were led into a very large ornate room, and you're going to see photographs of this. The ceilings were really high, and there was an enormous red area rug that covered most of the floor and they had dark wood floors. There was antique furniture um, from both Chippendale and Empire periods and they were placed around the room. Now, what was interesting, the table that we did the interview in was a big round wood table that appeared in the center of the room and above it hung a uh, lavish uh, red fabric chandelier. So I like to call it the red room. I don't know if they call it that, but. Nancy told us that the table once existed at Green's Tavern in Valley Forge, which was one of the headquarters for General George Washington, and that supposedly he actually sat many times at that very table. So it was neat for us to sit at a table where George Washington actually uh, uh, probably just, sat. Yeah, I just want to chime in. I know you want to talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about the room. Um, Remember, we're not going to talk about it here tonight, but remember the, the greenhouse I was telling you about with the George Washington State? I wonder, the one that's on Long Island, mm. I wonder if that's the same family. I wonder if they own mm. both houses. Anyway, we'll have to yeah, look at that. Exactly. Okay. So sorry so, to interrupt you. Okay. But there's an interesting item, and I do have a picture of this in the slideshow. Uh, it's very unique. It's an 1819 piano harp. So it looks like a piano and a harp. And I do have a picture of that to show you after. Um, there are only three existing in the United States. That's it in the whole country. Wow. Uh, there is also a recessed fireplace called an Ingle Nook fireplace, which we encountered in one of our other newer stories, <laughs> the new book. Um, and, it's, and that stood across from this uh, piano harp. 
And um, there are stately portraits all throughout the room, as well as several coats of arms. So it's a very regal and majestic room. And with mm -hmm. this red color, it just gives this, you know, you almost yeah, feel it's, like it's, Buckingham Palace. Yeah, you something. feel like you're, like the, the king and queen are going to walk yeah, in. Yeah, And, exactly. you know, um, Carrie Ann, in 1692, there was a man by the name of Stephanus uh, Van Cortland who mm -hmm. purchased 145 acres from the Seketog. Indians. Uh, five years later in, in 1690, 1697, I was going to say 1967, uh, he received a grant, maybe he was around 1967, he received a grant from the governor and built a small house on the property. Van Cortland was the first American born mayor of New York City and he came here to hunt and fish, you know, to get away from the city, you know, we all need that little space, that time away. And the house he built was only about you know, three or four rooms. Now, he died in the early 1700s, but in 1706, his widow and son sold a house and property to a man by the name of Timothy, uh, Timothy Carl, uh, and it's Carl with two L's, who was from another prominent family. Now, the Carls had added several more parcels of land to the estate, and they lived here in this place for about 52 years. Yeah, which is, which is a long time mm -hmm. for those, yeah, that time period. But as Nancy had told us during the interview, uh, she always says that in 1758 was when the real history of the house began. Um, here we have Jonathan Thompson of Setauket who came down on horseback with two saddlebags full of money. He paid 1,200 pounds British sterling for 1,206 acres. He was a wealthy landowner. And mm -hmm. interestingly enough, he, his family home was in Setauket. And that's a little hint because it has something to do again with the next book. Okay, everything's all everything's all connected. I know everything's all connected. Um, but Thompson sent his younger son Isaac, who was only about fourteen, to learn land management from the Indians, and it was Isaac that was going to develop a farm here. So in 1772, Isaac married Mary Gardner from the prominent Gardner family of uh, East Hampton. And she was a descendant of Lion Gardner from Gardner's Island. Now, Jonathan Thompson gave Isaac and Mary the deed to the property as a wedding gift. And the house had seven rooms at that point. And since Mary came from money, she actually had an additional uh, seven room house built alongside the first seven room house, which now brought the total rooms of the manor to 14 at this point. Yeah, and from 1758 until 1985, the property was privately owned by either a gardener or a Thompson. In 1985, it was put into the Robert David Lyon Gardner Foundation. It is a very long period in history for any house to remain in one family. Yes. You know, and at least eight or nine generations lived in Sagatos Manor. Uh, Robert David Lyon Gardner, who claimed to be the 16th Lord of the Manor at Gardner's Island, also owned and used the house at Sagatos. There were very few children in um, the various branches of the Gardner family, and Robert was the last of the Gardner name uh, when he died. Right, and the other thing that's interesting is that it does have a Revolutionary War history to mm -hmm. it as well, and some great stories. So for a brief time, it actually did serve as headquarters for the British forces during the Revolutionary War. And legend has it that one night during the Revolutionary War, Isaac Thompson, who was a squire, was signaling to someone from the house. And outside there were Hessian soldiers and um, they, had, they were killing some people and the soldiers saw Isaac and they fired at him. And uh, this is a true story. The musket ball came right through the house and the musket ball hole can still be seen in the stairway from where it came. And we will show you a photograph of that. The bullet was supposedly in the hands of his great grandson, Samuel Ludlow Thompson Esquire, who was an Islip president, but where it is now, no one knows. And I wish they had that because that would be a great yeah, thing that was to a have on display. Home. I mean, that yeah. was Imagine getting hit with that thing. Oh. Yeah, it went right through the house, though, and they still, they never repaired it. And all these years later, they have, I think, a little sign that says where the musket hole, uh, where the musket ball went in. You know, when I, when I think, Carrie, when I think of um, the wars that were fought in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and people shooting these, these um, uh, 
uh, guns, you know, these instruments, um, they were so crude with the musket. I mean, the, da the damage to people when they were on the battlefield, the injuries must have been. Yeah, and it's hard to believe though. I mean, here it is a house and they have Hessian soldiers that are just, you know, yeah. killing people left and right, right outside oh. your door. Well, I mean, I look mean, at what look what happened at the country house. Look how they massacred. Yeah. The fa they killed a family on the way to Jersey, and they they killed, um, you know, they killed the uh, the. Yeah, well, I guess they killed the whole family, really. Right. You know, um, but uh, it's sad how they just. Um, it was a brutal war. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I was trying to think of some other people, some other places we visited, but uh, well, we'll have more on that anyway. We can't right. tell too much, so. Sorry, I was gonna I was gonna blurt something out. <laughs> oh, and George Washington, yes. Um, anyway, George Washington made his his tour of Long Island, 1790. He actually spent one night at the estate on April 21st, 1790. So it's actually documented in his diary of his tour in Long Island uh, that he was paid to stay here, and he came to uh, thank uh, Squire Thompson for signing the letters of confederation for the independence of the country. That's amazing, you know. Uh, upstairs is where the room is where George Washington slept, although it's not the bed he slept in. Right. Uh, it was really neat because Carrie Ann, you know, you and I got to um, walk up the original staircase. I think we have a picture, a couple. Yes, pictures. we do. And that okay. staircase was, wait till you see it. I mean, it was okay. the steepest most narrow staircase. Yeah, it, and I uh, but George Washington walked up it, and he that was what at, was yeah. so cool. It was that cool. We sat at his table, and we. That's walked. why I, I think he follows us around. I really do. Yeah, but yeah. I can't. I know. We, we we've had a lot of different signs everywhere we go. We seem to have something from George Washington. Yeah. Um, but again, this was in the early days. Now I don't even know if you know this show, but during my early days of doing the research, there's actually mm -hmm. another story surrounding um, Isaac Thompson. It is said that one night in 1777, more than 300 British soldiers set up camp on the grounds of Sagtipos Manor. The commanding officer in charge was a British general by the name of Sir Henry Clinton, who had been making tours of the island. He frequently stayed at the manor. And at some point, the house was under attack during the night by uh, British sailors who arrived on a war vessel. The legend states, and this is in quotes, that Isaac Thompson was dragged by a rope around his neck across the highway where he was threatened with death. And this is really interesting. They, they didn't kill him. No. And it was because they spared his life because someone shouted out that he was a magistrate under the king so that they should not hang him. Isn't that interesting? That, that's very interesting. And why do I feel like Annette Williamson is like with us tonight? <laughs> I, I know, I just like, I saw an orb earlier and I saw some like a flash in her room. So I don't know, maybe she's here, but uh, Thompson's descendants primarily used the manor as a summer house uh, for the next 78 years. It remained a working farm during this time. Um, now, when we went there, there was no farm, right? That all that was property was sold off, right? Yeah, so yeah. They they have um, an, an old stable, I believe. We may yeah, have that's a picture a, of that. Yeah, but that's okay. about it. Though. But yeah, it's um, it's primarily wooded now. Wooded, yeah. In 1894, now um, another great grandson of Isaac Thompson and Mary Gardner became the sole owner of the estate, having brought out all the heirs. Um, his name was Frederick Diodati Thompson. He brought out every everyone else who may have laid claim to the property and then he had the last addition put onto the house. He hired the prominent architect of the period, Isaac Green. There's Green again. Mm -hmm. um, he put out, uh, put on the entire east wing and then the house went from 14 rooms to 42 rooms. 42, get it? Wow. Imagine that. I just can't get, what, uh, what bedroom are we in tonight, dear? I don't know. I, know. I think it's the fifth <laughs> or the seventh or the eighth. But that it started um, at seven and then an additional seven and then wound up being 42. 42. And, and, it, the, it, yeah. and the amount of family that lived there is just incredible. In fact, there's a story I forgot to put in here that um, there was a woman, uh, Sarah Gardner, when she had gotten engaged, she wanted to make sure that her engagement ring was a real diamond. So I think it's in the same room, the George Washington room, Joe, where, where yeah, you slept. I think, I think that you that there's somewhere. something on the glass where she had she etched, etched her initials yeah. with the diamond to, to make sure 
that it was a real diamond. And oh I, I think we may have a picture of that. I don't know Might, if you can we, see the yeah, We'll take a look. Though. Yeah, we'll uh, see and when then, we get up to that. Yeah, and then, um, you know, he put on the entire swing, okay, 42 rooms, mm -hmm. and then it served his, uh, his summer cottage. And he called it the- Oh yeah, it was a apple different name. Apple tree wick. Yes, apple tree, apple tree wick. wick. With e was, at the end of yeah. wick. Yeah, so it was, it was, you know, called something else at one mm -hmm. point. Now, of course, there's a lot more Gardner history. I mean, the chapter that I have in Ghosts of Round too, it just goes on and on about all the detail of each of the gardeners, but we'll be here all night. But basically, um, as we mentioned though, Robert Lyon David Gardner, Robert David Lyon Gardner <laughs> was the last of the gardeners to own the home. And over the years, the land surrounding the estate was subdivided. Uh, Mr. Gardner began selling off the estate except for 10 and a half acres, which surrounds the house today. Besides the house, this is to answer your question, Joe, there still exists a carriage house and, a, and garden sheds, although they're not open to the public. So there's really nothing left of the farming days. Uh, but they, those two things are situated on the property as well as a family cemetery with approximately 14 graves, including that of Isaac Thompson. And the, uh, the last parcel of land, about 230 acres south of Merrick Road, was sold to Suffolk County, who turned it into uh, the, the Gardner County Park in 1971. Right. But so that park was part of the estate. Part of the estate. And yeah, and a man by the name of George Weeks convinced Mr. Gardner to open up the manor to the public, which was really great for all of us. And he turned it into a museum with guided tours. Now, shortly uh, thereafter, the Sagatos Manor Historical Society was created uh, and granted an absolute charter by the Board of Regents of the University of New York, which incorporated the group. Uh, the goal of the group was to preserve historic buildings in Suffolk County, including the Sagatos Manor, and to perform historic research and promote public knowledge of local and national history. So the Historical Society works closely with the Suffolk County Parks Department Division of Historic Services, who is the official owner of the estate. Together, they work to promote and raise funds for the restoration of the uh, manor for future generations to enjoy. And the manor was placed on the National Register of Historic Places, I believe it was in 1976. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been it's been on there a while. And again, I don't know what's happening with it now because of COVID, but if you give a call over there or go onto their website, I'm sure you can find yeah, out. Hope, it hopefully definitely, they'll be opening it up yeah. soon. But at they, least you'll be able to see the pictures. Yeah. You know. So, but now on to some of the other legends and ghost stories. Um, there are several actually, but the most well known is the story of the Indian princess who was named I love Sa this story. Sagatawana. I know it's a great story. Um, in fact, there is research that I did that revealed that the legend goes back to the 1700s. So people were talking about this story in the 1700s, which is really interesting to me. Um, now, Sagatawana lived with her tribe on the grounds of what is now Sagatapos Manor. As the story goes, one day there was a ship in the Atlantic off the Fire Island coast, which was filled with settlers who couldn't make it to shore. A fierce storm prevented them uh, prevented their arrival um, in the harbor. At Sagatawana's request, she braved the storm and made several trips back and forth in her canoe to rescue the settlers. I mean, she was very brave. Um, she brought several of the men with her, the other braves. But before uh, they could save the last group of settlers, the storm began to get worse. Sagatawana was determined though that she was going to rescue every last one of the settlers. And she set out with her braves one more time in the canoe. Unfortunately, she never made it back and she was lost at sea and, and it was believed that she drowned. It has been said that on a stormy night, even to this day, that Sagatawana and her braves can be seen walking across Montauk Highway from Gardner Park on the old grounds in which she lived, the grounds of the Sagatapos Manor. So um, I don't know if anyone's reported any sightings recently, but there were actual reportings of this, seeing this Indian princess and some of her brave crossing the highway. Yeah, and there's actually a marker, a small plaque on the fence yes. of the property. I uh, think it was stolen though, remember it was stolen? I hope they replaced oh, it. Oh God, it's terrible yeah. what people can do, you know. It's, yeah. 
they shouldn't do stuff like and even like we when we go to these cemeteries carry in you know and we find about vandalism and stuff it's yeah um, but but, but the plaque was what on a it was on a gate right joe uh, I, I think so yeah, yeah it was on okay. a gate um and it says that it's the site of an unnamed indian girl there were also rumors of people seeing the ghost of an indian girl up in the loft area of the that's house, right mm -hmm. which is the oldest part of the house um, other people have claimed they've seen the girl roaming around the property every year in the month of October. <laughs> this happens to be Halloween. <laughs> it just happens to be Halloween. It's like Mary yeah. Graves. Yeah, Mary because there was another right? story that they had, um, that people said that the graves would actually like rise or almost open on, on right. Halloween. And they didn't know if it was, uh, you know, vandals yeah. or whatever coming to do something. Um, but over the years, there have been visitors uh, that have claimed to have experienced things in the house. Um, and I think Nancy, she never believed in ghosts before, but there were things that happened that she just couldn't explain. Uh, one of them, she was in one of the rooms, she was by herself in the house, and she saw the, I think it might have been in the red room, um, that she saw one of the outside doors, uh, that the handle was turning on the inside, and as if someone was opening it from the other side. And when she went to check, there was no one, there was no one over there. Um, there's oftentimes that you hear the sound of doors opening. Uh, Nancy told us that several people who photographed in the house, including a paranormal group that went there at one point, captured a lot of, um, of orbs. Now, while we were there, Joe, I remember you experienced uh, several cold spots in the house, the smell of pipe smoke, and you heard the faint sound of drums uh, being heard while we were out in the rain. And it's interesting because I heard the sound of drums in very similar atmospheric conditions when I was at Montauk Manor, not with you at another time, Joe. No, and, and we heard we heard them at Satoka too. Yes. Well, we yes. said, well, the can the, the yeah, yeah, the yeah. Can so it, it's interesting because again, sometimes some of this phenomenon occurs during these certain yeah, types remember, of, of weather situations. I remember that. You're right. I remember that about the drums at Montauk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting. Yeah, um, to, yeah, know. exactly. So that was something that I remember you said that you um, had heard and you thought that it was coming off. Nancy didn't of really believe in ghosts, right? No, no, she didn't. She didn't. But she did say that she saw a shadowy figure of a man in a farmer's hat standing on the front porch at one point. And when she went out, there was absolutely no one there. That's I mean, crazy. and there was no way where to run. There was no car there that someone jumped into. So she has it. She did admit that there were things that she just didn't understand. Yeah. So it's crazy. Yeah. Now I, I just want to make a technical note. We went back to the manor, didn't we, with the with the TV, mm. right? With the. Uh, mm. Yes, Dan you're right. We actually. Um, News twelve. Was we it? filmed a segment with Danielle Campbell and News right. twelve Island. We did, that was um, a full day. We were at the, uh, it was the, uh, not the old whale in Colston Hall. Yeah, we went um, somewhere. It was uh, Gourmet Goddess. It was right. Gourmet Goddess in Cold Spring Harbor. Then we went to Sag Coast Manor and then we went to the Ketchum Manor. It was quite That's right, I remember that. That day. was a full day. Now, I want to bring that up because I think that that's the one where I went upstairs, right on the second floor with the other Nancy, who was the tour director not Nancy and her husband, but it was another Nancy. No, that I don't remember. Right, the well, I, ha I have the clip because I didn't go to the servants' quarters on the mm -hmm. second floor when we went with Nancy because right. we walked through the house, the large room and everything. Right. But that was my first time there. But the second time she took me upstairs, I think, pretty okay. sure. So All anyway, right. I'm gonna So do you that. want to play the EVPs first and then um, we'll do the photos? No, I think or? we'll do the, let's do the photos first okay. since we talked about them a lot. And, All right, um, we'll go through them slowly because there's a lot. Yeah. And and you're gonna narrate, right? Yeah. You're gonna, mm -hmm. most of the photos you you supplied. So let me, um, let me do that. Let me get that rolling here. Um, <clears throat> just be a second here. Yeah, so um, let me see, we'll do the photos. That's PowerPoint. Get that ready. That's what's so much fun about what we do is because we get to go into all these cool places. Oh, and is, a lot of times so cool. we get to go into areas of the homes or the mansions where it's not open to the public. Yeah, like at Vanderbilt, I think, we did, right? Yeah, and I Vanderbilt, think Vanderbilt, we went into the 
the master bedroom. Right. With that, we, we see did the mummy, the right. sarcophagus. Yeah, we were actually in that room. But I think in this house, I don't think they allow people to go up the stairs where Washington. No, was. they don't. No. So, so you can sort of see the weather. You know, it sort of has that foggy, foggy look. It's great for a haunted house day. Yeah, you can see it was a while ago. Steve Levy was the county executive. Yeah. Um, so that's one image, and we have a longer shot, I think, of it too, right, Joe? And I got this oh, from the um, courtesy of the uh, Historic Society, Very just to nice. give our viewers see. So mm -hmm. um, this is the first floor. Again, the second floor they don't show on the tour because it is off limits, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we started. So there's a dining room. So this is we, the. Bedroom. I think we came in through the kitchen and then worked our way around. I think so. Yeah. And we then came in here. Uh, into the, I guess it was the Van Cortland parlor or the, no, yeah. the music room. The music room. Yeah. yeah. Is this the big room here, right? Yeah. I guess yes. that's the one. So you'll see pictures of all that. Um, and you can also see, uh, as Carrie was saying, uh, you'll see the different periods of the rooms, how they change. They're very old, smaller, and then you'll see the larger, more yeah. uh, elegant rooms. So, this okay, is so here's room. another, yeah. you know, you could see, I mean, look at how long this is. It's a huge house. You could almost see how it was divided up and expanded upon. It really is a huge house. So this is one of the staircases going up. There's so much of this artwork and, and portraiture. And you could see like the wallpaper, everything was, was top notch for its day. That was, you know, they spared no expense. So this must have been um, one of the earlier kitchens. Mm -hmm. And you can see the massive fireplace on the left. Yeah, and it's interesting. Uh, in a lot of these older homes, especially the ones we'll be talking about in the next book, um, you and like the Ketchum Inn, for example, how much is done. Everybody basically lives, eats, works, hangs out mm -hmm. in these small rooms. And yeah. the, you see how the kitchen serves for heat it mm -hmm. serves for cooking. Yeah. It serves for all kinds of different things. So it's a prominent part. Right. I notice that where you go to other houses where the, you have the, you know, the living room, you have the fireplace, but this is really the hearth is more. Yep. You know, and I think of Diane, you know, what I'm talking about oh. in the East. Yeah. And she loves to cook. Yeah. Here's so this view. may have been, I'm trying to think what this room was. Um, this might have been. Was this one of the. One it wasn't one of the bedrooms. I think it was yeah. a, a little sitting area or off the kitchen. Or, or maybe this was the other side of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, I okay. think it was. Yeah, the... yeah, I think it was in the same room. I mean, look at the size of that that heart. It's just really <laughs> love it. I love it. Incredible. And and I think this is this is the door. And another thing you notice about these places is um, the doors are small, the beds are small, the frames are small. Yeah. If you were a tall person, you had to watch bumping your head going through the door frames, or when you were sleeping on a bed, you you know your legs would be hanging off the end. Right. All right. So that's Nancy, right. and I don't know what I don't know what she's showing me. Oh, it looks like I don't remember what that is. is that pottery. It almost looks like a, I don't know if it's pottery or a giant shell or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I, I wish I had taken notes with the photographs at the time. Well, we do that, you know, we yeah. do, that's what I was saying earlier. Now, when we go out, you know, and do investigations, we, we do really the video, we yeah. do the video, but we also, yeah, we do like a video tour uh -huh. of the house. So we kind of remember what it looked like when we walked through and the way we walked through it. But also I think we comment a lot more on, oh, this is the part about this and this, right. and this. Yeah. where we, so some of this I'm a little iffy on exactly what was going and on. And also it's a 42 room house. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. You can't remember every single one. Um, so this is, look at, this is, you know, a very ornate parlor, Beautiful. Um, a little gathering place. Carrie Ann, historically, could, mm -hmm. uh, you've done more of the research. Um, did, like I find these rooms have different color wallpaper. Did they do that in these old houses? Did they? Yeah, it was pretty it, much every room had to be a distinct design. Yeah, they, they did, and the, and the colors too are all period colors that were mm -hmm. used. Um, this is the historical society part of where they store their a lot of the records, as you mm -hmm. see in the books and and different uh, things that they use throughout the house would would be kept in here if they didn't know where to put it. Yeah, and um, even though this is green. It, this this like color blue they call colonial blue which mm -hmm. 
uh, my sister actually painted in her house uh, mm -hmm. when they bought their house and, and restored it a bit. But it's it's like a greenish blue. It's kind of like this. Yeah. Bit. And even again in this room, um, this is the other this side a, of the this might have been a master bedroom, perhaps, or, um, or no, I think it was just a parlor. Just a, just but a again, parlor. they used the hearth for for heating. I mean, it could have been a bedroom at one point. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it was, but for these purposes, it was just used as a parlor. Mm -hmm. And you could see again the different uh, pictures on the wall. There's a lot of doors. There's a step up here that goes into the hallway leading to the upstairs. That's another view of the room with all the historical mm -hmm. books. I love this mirror. Um, yeah. So, oh, really? there's a picture of George Washington right there on the table. I'm telling you, he's he always <laughs> he's finds his way into. It's like Alfred Hitchcock <laughs> always <laughs> do a cameo in each of his. Episodes. And now we, we we look out for it. I mean, uh, this last book it was so crazy because everywhere we looked, there would be something of George Washington. So here I am talking with Nancy about something, but look at the, the furniture and yeah, I mean, the, what are those peacocks, mm -hmm. you know, behind Yeah, she it? talks, yes, uh, there's a clip I have, one of the EVPs where I think she talks about the peacocks. Okay, so now this is uh, the attic area that we're talking about, the loft. And this is where uh, people have seen um, the Indian princess as well. You know, did you get around. any orbs? You didn't get any orbs. No, up here. no, I didn't. I, I went through everything and uh, didn't get any that day. I don't know why, but we did. Yeah, because the energy here feels very different from another attic loft that mm -hmm. we were in, which we we'll, yeah. can't talk about right now, right. but um, very different energy. And here's again another view of that. I must have liked this room. I took a lot of pictures in it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, so here, here's Joe. Trying to see if he could capture anything on film. I, I guess he was wearing a noise. white t-shirt, doing a black. It was like a, I was like wearing a tuxedo here, <laughs> but it looks like I'm wearing an athletic shirt. Like he just came from the gym and like, oh my god, I better put a suit on. No, it's a white. It's just a white shirt. But and I don't know what that was, but you uh, were we were photographing. Yeah, she was showing us something and. Yeah. And then you were doing the same thing. Yes, I know. What was behind that door? That's right. Nancy's got a puzzle. But you could left. see in my hand, in my left hand, you could see I'm holding that's the ghost meter. Yes. That uh, we use. Yeah, if you, yeah. Do you see my mouse? Yes. Yeah, yep. It's right there. That's a ghost meter. And this is another small room, I think, off the first floor. Not the quite energy sure I get from this was... room, the, this room seems to be. It has like a male presence to it. Yeah. It's like a rec room or something. It seems right. like. Look at this. I love these um these ornate I know. cabinets are nice. and china yep. closets and stuff. They did it's amazing. You know, like we go to Deepwell's farms. It's a beautiful home, Greek architectural revi revival or Greek revival, but there's nothing in it. It's basically mm -hmm. the room's empty, but this one is completely loaded with with furniture. Right. Um, what else? Okay. Um, all right. So this they use as like a like a little mail room, mm -hmm. a little office almost. Okay. Here's it's the not, red room. Mm -hmm. This is the room where we did our interview, and you can see and, the table that we sat around. And, yeah, and you know, it's, it doesn't do these photos. Don't do it just this room. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. It's I mean, huge, it's really but big. you could see, this is the Inglenook fireplace. Um, mm -hmm. You could see the, the period pieces. Uh, there's a portrait of George Washington also on the wall, but you could see, I mean, this fireplace, this Inglenook fireplace is huge. So it gives you sort of some scale when you see how tall the ceiling well, is. Well, look at here. look at that. Yeah, look at that couch or that sofa over there. Yeah, that I mean, these were big pieces of furniture. Big piece of furniture, and it's tiny. Yeah. Look at that. Look how high yeah. that ceiling is. Uh, but that the chandelier was something. So this is a close up shot of that fireplace, and I just love this layout of the Inglenook fireplaces. That you could just sit right next to and feel like you're in oh this. is that why they call them because it's a nook yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know i didn't notice when we were there i didn't notice the uh the ship no on the on the, yeah. top of the mantle all right here's a picture of the piano harp and again this is only one of Beautiful. three 
And I can't remember who's who in these portraits, unfortunately, but um, you know, there are several obviously people that are up there, but th I really liked this image of the, uh, the piano harp. That's beautiful. Very unusual. I wonder how it was played exactly. Well, there's a keyboard. Um, so I guess it, it just, the hammer struck the, the bottom of the, um, the harps, uh, mm -hmm. why, you know, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I would love strings, to hear what, what it strings. sounded like. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I went, it's interesting. I went on um, YouTube, I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to get a clip of a piano harp. But when you put in search for piano harp, you get piano, somebody playing a piano and someone playing a harp. Yeah. I think I finally found one, but it wasn't enough time to really get mm. a good clip. Yeah, of it. it's, but it's very unusual nonetheless. Yeah. There's another picture of it. Mm. And, um, a lot of furniture in this room. A lot of furniture, yeah. All right, so now the this stairway. is the staircase. Yeah. And where it twists, where you see it twists, I can't even tell you how narrow it got as we walked up there. But that's yeah. where George Washington walked up the, that very staircase. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, and yeah, and you know, it's um, the way they built these stairs, when they, when they wrap them around, you can see where it starts to curl up there, mm -hmm. makes a turn, a 90 degree or 180 degree turn. Um, really the steps just got very treacherous. Yeah, yeah. We always get right, when we go on these steps, whether into the basement or upstairs to the attic or third floor or something, they always tell us- They always, really yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's always at the top. Like it wasn't the same, like you know, how houses and staircases are built today where everything is They exactly would never, these even. would never be the code today. No. They would never <laughs> get away with something like this. No, no. There I am venturing up. What? I feel like you're, you're like back I'm 12 at, years old in that one. God I, know, you, I feel I feel like you're back at the uh, you're back at the lighthouse, the Execution Rocks oh lighthouse gosh. here. Even my jeans are dated there. Gosh. <laughs> so I don't feel so bad wearing my 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 uh, yeah, no, jeans we T-shirt. It wasn't our best fashion suit. day. That's right. Um, so here's some more portraits. Again, our friend George Washington here is there. Okay, so this is the room where George Washington slept, but it's not the bed. But this is the room, and then again, you see another portrait of him. But I mean, like you said, Joe, every room has this a different color. Yeah, has a different type of wallpaper, different, you know, area rugs. Is that an is that an area rug on the floor, or is that actually um, is that wood a wood floor with? Or uh, I think it's a rug. A rug, I yeah. I'd had to notice that. You know, it's funny when you look at these pictures. I would love to go back there again. You know, yeah. it's really, um, it's just a beautiful place. I think we would pick up a lot more too. Right. All right. So here is the sign that they have. This is going up to the attic area um, with the musket hole. Where is actually? Where is the? Is it this right here? Is that the hole? Yeah. Yeah. Right with it. Mm -hmm. So I guess. It looks like, see, I don't know how, I guess it was fairly small, but I'm thinking it's that roundish part. And then mm -hmm. because it may have fired or whatever that it cracked it open, but that's what they claim is yeah. where it went in. Oh. Now this, um, I believe is the pane of glass um, where the initials, I think it might be on the bottom right here. You can't see my arrow, can you, Joe? No, I can't. Uh, okay, you can yeah, tell you're, me you're which... right here. I think. Oh, I think you just passed it. I think it's that little part there, is where um, mm -hmm. she scraped her diamond ring, mm -hmm. put her initials. That's cool. I know we saw it. I know when we were there, mm -hmm. we actually looked at yeah. it. So, so Look here's at this. another bedroom. And you know, another thing about most of the beds in these older homes, if, unless you had a lot of money, they were they were rope mattresses. I mean, the rope springs, yeah. they were rope beds. They had actually heavy like ropes to use like a, for a ship and they were strung across. So they had wires or frames, but they, they weren't comfortable. But these beds they have here, look at the canopy. I know they're pretty there. elaborate. And yeah. you know what? I'm looking at this photo more carefully. Um, if you look to the left, mm -hmm. I think I did capture a faint orb down below on this piece of furniture. Yep. Right there. No. Right here. No. That's the leg, no, not seeing it. Uh, just tell me go left, right, where? Right, go right, right there, right there. You're right on it, do you see it? 
Yeah, right here, right? Yeah, right, I right, think right, that, right I mean, we can't, we don't have the ability to enlarge this on the screen. Uh, not right on now. this one, no. No, no but I, I think I that might be, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that could probably be one. Yeah, I'm sure you got some. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, you know, I'm sure you've, I always tell you, I say, I've gotten better at finding things. We found a few things that we didn't mm -hmm. have in the original uh, mm -hmm. books. Um, and I'm sure if we went back, just like you always say, if you go back and look at your right. family photos, you'll yeah, find orbs. Find things. Okay, this yeah. is one of my favorite pictures, okay? It's a great picture. Because Nancy is explaining to us, she has her hand on one part and she was about to put her hand on, a, on the other part of the house and see how her leg is slightly forward. That's where she stands. And she says she is actually in the three parts of the house at the same time. So from the 1600s, the 1700s and the 1902 time period, that's where the house comes together in this very shot. And she just was so excited to show us that, that that's she could great. actually be, be in three periods of time of that household at, at once by standing in that. Yeah, spot. and you know what? I'm feeling like there's a portal right there. There's like a vortex right there. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like the energy of these different times. It's almost like a like a Star Trek episode right. where there's a there's a shift, a temporal shift, and mm -hmm. people are they have to solve a problem, a right. time problem. That's a that's a cool picture. I had forgotten about that. Yeah. Just standing there. Now here's the dining room, and very large, very beautiful. Um, the ceiling, you know, is very elaborate gorgeous, with the wood. Really gorgeous. Yeah. Imagine the the time it takes to clean and dust everything. Yeah, it was. It's a big house. Now this is, um, again, the, the weather. This was almost, I don't know if you knew this, Joe, this shot was almost considered for the cover of Ghosts of Long Island too. Um, it was one of the ones that was up there. But we walked down this path and that's actually that white fence over there is where we will see the sign of the, for the Indian princess. Mm -hmm. I believe it's on that. Yeah, here it is. Grave of Indian girl, name unknown. So. And they just sort of have it there. I think it was stolen at one point, and I think now it might be on a tree. Uh, and you could see that old carriage house in the background. But look yeah, at I the remember, fog. I know. I remember we walked, we did go to the carriage house. I think it took some pictures of it. But... Yeah. Oh, there you are. You were coming back from that. God, I look like I'm, I'm about to jump <laughs> on a horse and go fox hunting or something. Tally-ho. Well, I just want to check something. A tree with the moss growing on it on the left side is interesting. It almost looks like yeah. Something. I was just looking at. I was looking, looking at. at the, yeah. I was looking at the other tree, the brown tree. Almost yeah, this one like right here, right? Yeah, yeah there seems to be looks something. Looks like a there. face there. Yeah. So here's the uh, the family graveyard, and this is also where Isaac Thompson is buried. Wow, I mean, look at this, this side of the house looks totally different. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. It's a and it huge, has a nice huge porch. House. Yeah. yeah, I love that porch. Actually, you know what? I, we can't talk about it, but doesn't that remind you of another place or two? Yes. I know you keep giving these hints. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, <laughs> I'm annoying realizing, everyone. I'm, you know, it's been a while since we were here. I'm just yeah. realizing how much It does much resemble similarity. something and, that's coming up in the new book. Yes. Now this I put in here just because I thought this was so it's great, interesting. It's very haunted. I mean, look at that tree. Yeah, it's really gnarly. Or trees. Beautiful. I don't even know what kind of tree that is. And then this is the infamous picture that Joe took of me um, outside in the graveyard. That's one in of my the, favorite pictures of you. You really do <laughs> look, yeah, you do look like you're in the English countryside somewhere. <laughs> yes. Getting ready to go back for a spot of tea. Yes. I think there's this energy there that everybody starts to act like a, like they're ten years old or something. You know, it's, <laughs> right. it's just like well, again, you could see that fog yeah. on the right hand side. It was crazy out. And you know, actually, this type of lighting for photography, as you know, yeah. is is really great. There's no harsh contrast. Yeah. I don't even know if I remember this picture. Uh, you've never seen this picture. Yeah. I always like to add things. Right. You know, so, um, so that's cool. Yes. Now, so now you have some EVPs. You have some EVPs. Let me, uh, let me just find that. So what we do behind the scenes here, we we have to queue up these various things and um, 
share them. So um, I tried queuing them up, Carrie Ann, like doing them all at once and having them ready to go. But then what happens is the screens, like they compete for which one's open and which isn't. You don't know what you're mm. clicking on. All right, let me get this ready to go. Okay. Now we should have sound on this. So I'm going to try to share with sound as well. I'm just trying to find our, why can't I get back to our presentation? Well, while you're looking for that, I'm yeah. going to answer a question uh, from Marissa. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think we answered this. Are the stories true about the ghostly woman in white who comes out onto Montauk Highway by the Sag Coast Manor? I haven't heard that there's a woman in white, but that's probably, you know, part of Mary and Mary's grave legends. I, I haven't heard that for Sag Coast Manor. But there's always rumor of there being a lady in white. But I think it's more the uh, Indian princess that has been seen coming mm -hmm. out onto Montauk Highway. All right, I've got the PowerPoint presentation. Right. For, for a second there, you actually disappeared. I couldn't find the Zoom anymore. Um, there we are. OK, here we go. And let's see, sound, yes. How many EVPs do we have, Joe? I think five or six. Oh, really? OK, mm -hmm. so some of them will be new tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you see that screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So after thank you spoken, you hear a spirit's voice say hi. Sit down. Oh, oh sure. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, a chair. So it's a very whispery. Whispering. That's that's again. These are not the ghost box recordings. So right, they're white noise. White EVP. noise. EVP. So I'll we don't hear one. them. We don't hear them live. Right. So I'll play yeah. it one more time. Sit down. Oh, okay. sure. Sit down. Thank you. Right here. Uh, just, just kind of slips Very in. It's just high. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when the director gives a job title, which is, was Nancy, your, your spirit says, I know. Okay. So this, I don't know if you've heard this one. Mm -hmm. And your title? Wow. You hear it? And his 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 decibel level is actually higher. higher it's like yeah. more like okay. when you when you had the uh EVP of the little girl in um Green Lawn that said mm. hold. Yes, me. yes, like, like they were right in the recording. Right exactly. there. So listen, yeah, play, can one play more that time. again. Yeah. And your title? Many, 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 obviously she's been at that a long time. She loves it though. As a director talks about the peacocks being raised, a spirit voice says, we're going to stop in. You then hear a spirit knock or a spirit rap, um, just a knock on the wood. So. And in the first part, we're going to stop in. It's kind of hard to hear, but yes, it's, we're going to stop in. It's kind of right on top of as she's talking about the, the peacocks. Or even regular peacocks, be, which were being raised. Here on My husband goes. And I retired that was, that was the bang. peacocks and put them on the property and raised them. Ah, how's the garden? It's coming. The, the, the county got So that was, I don't know if you heard it, but it, he said, we're going to stop. We're going to stop it. So, okay. Uh, you may not remember this, but this might have been when we went back with, with Daniel Campbell. He was mm -hmm. 12. Yeah, because um, I think that last one, I think I heard Danielle's voice in that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah. think that was, she was talking in it too. Yeah. We're in the, uh, what used to be the child's room. Carrie Ann just had an experience. I felt something passed through her brain. Her brain was scanned by spirits. <laughs> nice. I, I, just so you guys know, <laughs> we have this. We're like the like Mulder and Scully of like the X Files. Right. So I'm. I have all these little like. Well, I'll say you know, Carrie Ann just she her <laughs> voice just changed into a spirit voice. So I thought she, you'd find that fun. Yes. Yes. All right. So um, when Joe says all the spirits are hanging out on the second floor, voice says yes. This is, where all the, this is where they're all hanging out here. All right, let's ask a question. 
Now it's hard to hear it, but yeah, that he, one I don't know if I heard. Yeah, it's a play again. It's very, very quiet. He says yes right as I'm saying this is where they all hang out. It's right after I say that. Uh, this is where all the, this is where they all hang it out here. Right, oh yeah. Question. It's very subtle. Yes, I did hear it that time. But it's like I hope yes. you guys heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, a female spirit voice says hi when I talk about them kissing me, okay? They're still doing, they're kissing me, I guess. I don't know, it's still going on. Do you hear that? Yeah. She says it twice. They're still doing, they're kissing me, I guess. I don't know, it's still going on. Interesting. Yeah, now this, and this is my favorite one. So this, this is, you weren't there, so the other Nancy on the second visit, I think, we went upstairs to the second floor servants hall, which is closed. It was dark up there. We were in the hallway and you'll hear a male spirit voice say, hey, then both of us hear the voice. Um, Nancy hears it too, which is kind of cool because, you know, when we've been doing the ghost box on the, on the, for the new book, you, you and I will both hear the same thing and comment on it. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear us say, I heard it. And then you hear this, how Nancy reacts to the experience of the cold spots, which you No. Uh -oh. <laughs> as soon as Joe said cold spots, we lost them. Joe, I will give it a minute to see if he comes back to us. Yeah. Ooh, we lost you for a minute, Joe. Hello. Yeah, there we go, it chills. All right, um, you still there? Yeah, I lost you for right, a second. Yeah. All right, let me restart that slide. Yeah, okay. Okay, all right, here we go. I was trying to hold it up there, pushing it down, yeah, they're doing it again. Did you hear that? I did. You did? Oh, I did. It was like pop uh, or something. Yeah. A man's voice, right? From, from behind oh, yeah. you, down is down. Ooh, I'm having chills. Yeah, me too, that's them. Hello. Oh, yeah, there we go. It chills. Colder now, right? Oh. Don't be creeped by it. Okay. It's okay. Freezing. It's normal. That's all right. It, what they're doing is they're taking energy out of the air to be around us. It's just a cold spot. That's normal. Okay. So That's she amazing. That was yeah, good that a, you captured that. Um, yeah, the right. whole uh, the whole experience. And then you know she was okay after that. She was fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know. When you, you start getting the chills and the, the temperature drops 10, 15 degrees, it, it could be a little disconcerting. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes back to, again, what you were saying about these cold spots around yeah. the house. And it would be great if we went back with the ghost box show, you know? I mean, because oh, yeah. again, this is this is from 2008. Yes. And with very minimal, you know, we've really come a long way since then. So to we be have able it. to get what we got was something. You know? Yeah, and we're, we're a lot more attuned to things. I think we look for things. Also, the spirits know us now. Um, they, they know when we're open to listen and see and feel for them. So mm -hmm. they, I think they yeah. should be a, yeah. a little clearer now. Now we have a question in the chat uh, sure. from, from Jean. Why was the Indian princess so intent on rescuing these men? I honestly don't know. I mean, that's how the legend goes. I don't know if she was just a good person and she knew that people were out there, but she made all these trips apparently um, and met her own demise, unfortunately. I feel like if, if she was talking to me, I feel like the reason would be she wanted to show her bravery was transcended race. It transcended the white men it was just to save humans. And also she felt like, maybe it's a cliche, but she, she felt like sort of she had to do something to show the other braves that she could do something that maybe people were afraid of, of these men. Right, yeah. And so she was gonna go and actually go out and face them directly. And yeah, because be it sounded like she was in charge of this whole thing. Sounds so like it, yeah. She had to have had some kind of status, I guess, so. It's really amazing. I, I, God, if we could, if there was a way we could just be there and watch this happen. Wow. And again, I, I can't mention it, but remember there's another boat mm -hmm. where the, the ice, remember that? Mm -hmm. where one of our yep. stories will be. And that, that reminded me a lot of that. Where the, yeah. So there were really, 
you know, a lot of people don't realize there were a lot of really fierce terrible storms, not only where there's cold and ice and snow and howling winds, but Long Island has had a share of vicious yeah. weather patterns. Yeah, that's for and, sure. And we don't have, you know, now we got the, we got the, the cars with the heat and the de-icers and the fog lamps. I mean, but back then, man, these were wooden ships. I know. They were not wearing their land's end overcoats <laughs> and their, their booties, you know? No, definitely so, not. So I hope you enjoyed those. Yes, do we have any other questions? Oh, is there someone in the chat? Is that a question? Oh, oh there's a question. One. Let's see. Uh -huh. uh, this is from Francis. Parts of the house reminds or resembles Rainham Hall in Oyster Bay. <coughs> yeah, probably that period of the 1700s. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, you know, very beautiful. It does. It does. It it does. Also, also, actually, I, you know, it's funny you, you mentioned that because it also remind me of the country house a little bit. And maybe even catch them in the older part of the house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not country house, not so much. I don't think it, it was a little bit more ornate. Sag's mm -hmm. most man on the country house. That's it's true. Yeah. More of a farm's house, mm -hmm. but very interesting. Uh, yeah. Anyway, all right, we have another question. Do you tend? This is from Catherine. Do you tend to get more EVP recordings indoors? Oh, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. How would you answer that, Joe? I think kind of right. Um, yeah, I would think so. Have we taken? I don't even know if we've tried to take. Well, actually, I no, we have. Yeah, I can't we've, talk. Yeah, I can't. we took them. Uh, we did get EVPs outside of um, William City Mount's house yes. when we first did our investigation before we were able to go in. When we, you know, we, we've talked about this before. Um, but generally, I think we have done the EVPs inside only because of the energy that's sort of trapped in these houses, right? Joe, what would you say? Uh, no, I would I would disagree Different. a little bit there. Um, I think we haven't done the outside just because we are inside a lot more, but um, I can't mention where, but let's just say in the Brookhaven area, um, we were outside by the, uh, by the barns, you mm -hmm. know, and we got the ghost box recordings mm -hmm. so no so we've gotten yeah, some but some, it's not, yeah, and usually we, also, we do it inside usually though. yeah usually inside but right. it, I, maybe we should do more outside yeah we never, because yeah. we do visit the cemeteries we go to the different parts yeah of we the, never thought of doing it so thank no, you never, actually for bringing that great up great question we we'll try that. that yeah um then we have someone else say uh, with the ghost box recordings no we didn't have any ghost box recordings because no. it was before this is pre ghost pre ghost box, box yeah do yeah. they want to i know some of them have seen the go. Let me let me get the ghost box. I'll, I'll... Oh, Joe, this one you're gonna like this next question. Oh, what, what were you gonna do? Is I was just gonna ghost... show him the ghost box, but uh, yeah, let me grab it real fast. Okay, all right. So this question though is is gonna be for Joe, unrelated to Sag Manor, uh, but any eerie history about Lagrange? It's on the same. Oh, okay, that's that's the ghost box. I think we've shown it before. Yeah, we have. Yeah, but maybe yeah. some people haven't. Seen so it, it's different from the regular. Uh, white noise recorder that we use, which is just like a radio shack. It's very, it's very accurate. But yeah. this story, okay, um, I mean, this question is from Marissa, unrelated sex post manner, but an eerie, but any eerie history about LaGrange, it's on the same highway after all. Now you did something separate. We, we never did something. Didn't you tell me about LaGrange? No, we did a, a we didn't do anything, but you No. And what is LaGrange? Is that a is that the name of the place? Yeah, L A and then capital G R A N G. I right. No, I haven't done that one. No. We the Grange I was talking about was actually a Grange, like a meeting house, which was on the North Shore out east. Oh, okay. That's yeah. what I was thinking of then. So but no, we haven't done the LaGrange. Yeah. Okay. That's add, add it to the list. For the next the next there you go. Um, project. Francis, have you ever set up equipment? overnight in any haunted house we have not but you joe have done things on your own yeah i'd like to comment about that but first Actually, i would we have yeah. rain and hall. uh rain and wall and also say didn't we do something at sands point but it was not in the book yeah it but was, not oh we didn't stay overnight but we no, were there but we into did, the but, night but we did the one i call contact at midnight which mm -hmm. was the at Raynham Hall, that was the, we actually got there at midnight, mm -hmm. we started. So that was into the wee hours. I did one, you know, it's funny. We're very different types of ghost hunters. Um, 
I always wanted to do an overnight event. And a lot of my colleagues out there, uh, they do they do that all the time. They go to like Mount Misery, Sweet Hollow Road, or they'll go to some haunted house and they'll just stay all night. I decided to do that once. It was a, a private home and they were having phenomena there. And I brought my team in and we decided to stay all night, actually till 5 a.m. when the sun came up. Um, most of everybody fell asleep. I, and about two or three o'clock in the morning, a couple of the members said, there's nothing going on here. Why are we staying up all night? This is ridiculous. So we'll just go home. So, so you didn't, so you didn't we capture didn't, anything. We didn't capture anything. We re, maybe an orb or two, but nothing really. So I think it makes the point that going, staying all night is fun and it could be very productive. But I think you have to be prepared for it. And honestly, I carry and you and I talk about this all the time. People say, do you have to go at like nine o'clock at night or two in the morning? You could, there's a lot of stuff happens at that hour, but really we've gone. The, it was, we, it was we, like a regular work day for It's us. a regular I mean, work day. You because, can go at two in the afternoon and you can get stuff. I mean, most yeah. of our ghost box recordings are in the middle of the day. Right, and, and, and also because at the time, especially when we're doing things like Saggy's Post Manor, I had younger children. I had to be back in time for the school bus. So no, we yeah, actually treated it like a regular, like work, regular job. job. Yeah. And, and also a lot of these places, these historic homes, you know, they close down at five o'clock. Right. They, they, you have to get special permission if you want to go in the after hours. So it's too complicated. Um, right. But, uh, um, and then we have one last question before we go. Um, oh, actually we have a couple in the chat room too. All right. Sure. This one, they just want to hear the ghost box, just what it sounds like scanning, how it continues. Sure, to, sure. To just put that on as an example. Uh, can you hear that? Yeah. Um, we're getting, we're actually we're getting responses, Carrie Ann. Let me get the volume up a little bit. So, now, do you hear how it it's just going on its own? Let me start that, scanning. Okay, that's hi, a good spirits. example. Hi, spirits. How are you? That Someone said answer. hi. That was an answer. So. So that's how it so it goes. So yeah, what we do with the ghost box, um, and what you'll see in the next book, um, is that we um, we do the recording. Usually we do it with just ourselves, or we do it with someone else from the property, right? And um, we play, we turn it on, and we have questions prepared, or we have just a very basic conversation. You ask a question, I ask a question, we see what we answer, but it's real time. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and I really hope again that we can do the in-person events because we're going to work on putting together this great presentation yes. where you'll get to hear everything. So yeah, and, and when when you play when the ghost box is going, we often hear the answers real time, but we're also recording it. Mm -hmm. They're all good old digital recorders. And then I right. take that, upload it to the computer, and I use my software to basically take out the dead air, clean up the noise, and you'll end up with a real conversation, mm -hmm. really intelligent communication. Right. So it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Francis says, uh, I went to an event at Rain and Paul years ago at Halloween time. They presented what they recorded and caught on film from overnight. It was wonderful. Yeah. The, I remember when they, I never attended that, but I remember hearing about yeah. those the things that they do. So it's definitely fun. And, and it is fun. And um, I've been doing the um, Deep Wells farm events the now they didn't have it this year but last year we did um three weekends in october mm -hmm. friday and saturday they do the haunted mansion tour but I, they put me there as an sort of an mc or kind of warm up the crowd you know i s sit in the big tent where people are signing up and waiting and i have a little table in the corner of the tent and i talk about the real ghosts of mm -hmm. the house which kind of keys people up because you I mean there's really go I thought this was fake you know there's all <laughs> guys with fake blood running around and but we had we actually and this thing event carry and it would run 
like 10, 10 o'clock, 10 30, 11 o'clock at night. So mm. it really was running into the evening. Wow. We had, we had phenomena there. Real yeah. phenomena happened to the, the group that was with me, and stuff yeah. happened in the house where something came crashing wow. through the window. And, That's yeah, amazing. So, That's yeah, amazing. So, so it, yeah, I think those things, those overnight things are fun. It's just for our you know, nine to five work. Right. Um, because again, time. I mean, the ghosts, the, the early ghost books, they were 30 stories yeah. in each book. I mean, I, I, I cannot begin to tell you how much work it is to write one of these ghost books because of the way we do it uh, with mm -hmm. the interviews, the research, the transcribing, the recordings, the ghost box the transcripts it's just it's a yeah. lot of work so. and, and you and on one of the recordings again we can't say where it is but in the new the new book there's one comment where i had a recording on tape where you say you were talking to one of the other staff members there and you say you watch it's going to take joe about 100 years to to go through all those recordings <laughs> yeah because yeah. sometimes we have long sessions we yeah, do very, yeah um catherine has a question you are great investigating historical sites. Any interest post pandemic in traveling further afield? Sleepy Hollow, uh, Fort Mifflin, and Philadelphia, Staten Island Revolutionary War sites. It would definitely be fun, but um, for the sake of what I do with the books, uh, my publisher has us as, you know, Long Island historical and ghosts at this point. But I mean, who knows? Maybe one day we'll, we'll branch out if I have a little bit more yeah, time. And, and I think you need to know too that uh, Carrie Ann and I, she, we do the book together, but we, all, I also have my own ghost hunting group, and, and we've gone like we went to to, to Pan. Yeah, that's right. You've gone, right? Yeah, we've gone. I took my group once to. Uh, I have Town, been, right where Major Andre was. Hung. I forgot about that. That yeah, was another and, good one. Yep, yeah, and uh, I was up. I used to live up in Plattsburgh, and I did some stuff there. I did a, several places. Uh, we did a couple places in New York City, in Brooklyn, uh, in um, Lower Manhattan. Um, so yeah, we do sometimes branch out. Um, and uh, in fact, you know, Carrie Ann, I saw Peter Stuyvesant's ghost in the in the courtyard down mm -hmm. the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. really? I saw this guy standing in this church courtyard, mm -hmm. and I don't remember the exact street. It was somewhere, you know, right. in Alphabet City or somewhere around there, but. Anyway, I saw this guy standing in the car and he was, he looked like somebody from the past. He was just standing there staring at me. I thought it was like maybe a homeless guy or something, mm -hmm. or just, you know, he was just, did, was there. And then later I made the connection that, that I think that was Peter's because people had seen him. Right. Um, because uh, anyway, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting. There's a lot of beautiful places. Uh, I could also say that many of our members, many of my colleagues and friends, uh, they often go on trips all over the country. They move, they go down to Florida. Uh, I have one uh, colleague, uh, her and her family, they go to uh, Gettysburg every year. Oh, see, yeah. I've never been to Gettysburg. Can you imagine this? People show I, well, me pictures at lectures from there all the time. Well, when I, when I worked, when I worked for a living in the eighties and the nineties, <laughs> my territory was Pennsylvania and upstate New York right. and basically New England. So I used to, when most people were staying at the Holiday Inn or something, I used to stay in, in the old bed and yeah. breakfasts. Right. I would just pay the difference on my budget, so it never the company never had to pay that extra. I I chipped in, um, and because it was you know bed and breakfasts are always a little more pricey, not all the time, but so usually pricier than a hotel room. But anyway, um, it was fun. I stayed at the Logan Inn in yes, Newport, Pennsylvania, Logan. which is the yep. oldest inn, and. George Washington yeah. is probably there. Uh, so yeah, so Carrie Ann and I have traveled. You've had, actually, you've gone a few places. You've had- Yeah, but not in, I mean, I've, because my husband and I have for the to book, enjoy, no. you know, yeah. better breakfast and, and history. So we will Yeah, you had the historical. orbs from down south, right? Right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So- mm -hmm. um, Good question But though. not investigational, like Joe and I haven't gone to maybe say, in okay. The, maybe know. in the future when we're so both- we'll, we'll, we'll see where, where the, where our, the books lead us. That's right. You will go um, wherever they, they want us to go. Jean has a question uh, for you, Joe. Have you ever slept with the ghost box on with the recording? <coughs> um, yes. Yes and no. My spirit guide, Melissa, actually first came to me with not the ghost box, but the, the um, digital recorder, just the regular you know, tape recorder. 
um, I had fallen asleep, I left it on. And in the morning when I checked it, I had conversations, EVPs going on, sound effects, music, all kinds of things on the recording for like two or three hours until the memory ran out. Uh, I use the ghost box often with myself when I'm at night, when I'm just in my room or in my office or I'm, I'm in the car. Um, and yeah, they, um, they'll talk anytime. I sometimes do use it late at night mm -hmm. just because it's quiet and I can focus. Yeah, definitely. And boy, I have some. Carrie Ann even hasn't, you haven't heard a lot of my recordings, um, my personal recordings, right. my spirits, but I have, I have recordings that are, you think you were talking to your best friend or a, a relative so or clear. You know, it's beautiful, really. It's yeah. cool. It's a lot of fun. That's a good question, but thank you for that. Okay. And yeah. then lastly, we have Catherine just commenting, saying mm -hmm. thank you for another great presentation. Thank I appreciate the thank talk you. being enhanced with lots of photos and your investigative results. Well, I really appreciate the feedback, Catherine, and we try to make it interesting. We've had so many different webinars. Uh, what we're thinking about doing is continuing them for April, May, maybe have one in June, then um, we need some time off for the summer. And I know everyone wants to be outside at that point. Anyway. Yeah, we have to get ready for the fall. Yeah, we have to get ready for the fall. Yeah. And um, and then we'll see how it goes with the with the tour. But for next month, wait, let me just see if tomorrow. OK, yeah, and don't uh, forget, we're, Francis we're gonna, saying, Francis we're is saying thank this. you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Francis. Yeah. We're going to do something with the goat. We were talking about this the last couple of webinars about maybe doing like a live Q&A. Yeah, because we have someone else saying here, the ghost box is tech advancing. Yes. Um, and this and is Catherine the old ghost says, box, guys. This yeah. Is... So Catherine says, be well, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the week. Uh, I want all of you to as well. One final announcement, if you want to know what's coming up for next month. Um, and you'll get this in the newsletter and uh, through the email. On Tuesday, April 13th, we have uh, the Montauk Manor webinar. And then on Wednesday, April 21st, we have Spy Coast Farms. Usually I like to do it, uh, have a week in between where we don't have the webinar, um, but because of the way Eastern Passover falls, I, I know people might be traveling if you can. So we decided to do, you know, back-to-back -back weeks for the month of April. So April 13th, Montauk Manor, and April 21st, Spy Coast Farm and the Culper Spy Room. And uh, that's it. So I wanna thank you all for joining us once again. I appreciate your feedback, your comments, your support, and um, we hope you have a great rest of the week. Yeah, and Carrie Ann, um, give your website stuff again too. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, the website is um, ghostsoflongisland.com or carrieannflanaganbroski.com. And there are links to Joe's website through mine where you could listen to EVPs from past investigations and see video clips and things like that, um, as well as additional uh, ghost photographs. For those of you who are interested in any of the current books that are out, you can also purchase them on my website and I can sign and personalize them for you. There's a spot where you can put. So that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was fun, everybody. It was. We'll see you next time. Take care. You hear the music? Yep. Great. I remember the radio show was a lot of fun. <laughs> so the next one is April 13th, April right? April 13th. All right. See you then. See you then. Bye, everybody. Thank you.